Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Patera with you on day one of the food storage challenge. I'm starting with as many fresh foods as possible. It's going to be easier. We're out here in the heat with the wood stove going. I'll show you what I've got cooking up. This is my breakfast. At the same time, I'm cooking up some stuff for uh, a lunch and anything I can cook ahead for dinner, okay? Because I'm telling you, your main issue is time. If you're doing a lot of chores on your homestead, and especially if you're trying to homeschool your children at the same time, cooking in the heat on a wood stove is not the most pleasant thing. It's pleasant, it's fun, but in order for everything to work, you are pushed in every direction. So I've got biscuits going. I'm going to have eggs going. I might fry up some meat. I'm going to do some hamburger that I've got canned. Um, and, you know, to try to work different things for all of our meals, especially mine. Because you've got to make it work when you are doing it. Okay, so let me show you what I've got cooking over here. And I'm pretty hungry. So let's go. All right, guys, so I've, I've just started simmering up my, uh, I just picked this bell pepper this morning, and it's in lard. Over here, I've got my biscuits going. They are ri rising up. So, obviously, you can see that I can have two skillets going at one time on this little stove, which works great for me. In a would-you-starve scenario, it's better than nothing, right? It's a really good deal. So, what I'm going to do is check these biscuits, and I'm going to flip them over. You want to keep this top on it because that's, again, that gives you more of that baking effect that you see. And then I'm going to add my eggs. Now, I'm going to cook more food than this because, again, <laughs> this little sucker right here, this little wood stove is putting out a lot of heat. So, you know, right now it's really hot outside, so I want to make everything work as much as possible. Plus, when you're working the farm and you're milking the cow and you're picking the corn, you can't be in two places at one time. You can't be over there doing all those chores if you're having to be over here tending a fire and cooking, you know, whatever. So, it, you know, you really need to think about that. All right, let's go to the next phase. All right, guys, so clearly you can see what happened here. I had the biscuits towards the back, which is seemingly the hotter part of this oven, okay, of this little wood stove, okay, really hot. So I moved it forward. I flipped them and I moved it forward. I'm going to put the... Um, I'm going to put the lid back on to finish the baking effect. I can handle a little bit of burn on one or two. I mean, really, who's that picky when you're standing here hungry, you know? So just to show you that you have to pay a lot of attention. You have to be in, you, you've got to be here right on it, people. Cooking with wood heat is nothing like having a stove and an oven top. You are dealing with an element that is controlling you, and in some ways more than you're controlling it. So you have to learn to work with it. This is a good thing. Learning day one. Let's keep moving. All right, guys. So right here we've got some eggs going. I've got my biscuits done. I've got my molasses ready. I've got my butter and buttermilk. And now I'm about to start frying up some bacon. And I just might get a little crazy and make some gravy. Who knows what I'll do next. Hear that seal? That's what I'm talking about. Now we're going to get the bacon rolling. Just to show you what your canned bacon looks like when you take it out of the jar. You can see here what I'm talking about. And that's what we're going to be frying up. Alright guys, so this is what I'm doing for right now while other things are preparing to cook. This is my br breakfast brunch. Homemade biscuits made with all things I have in storage, including lard, no butter there. I brought out my one of my jars of canned bacon because not only am I going to eat that now, but I'm also going to make it later. I'm going to take the grease and maybe some of the bacon bits and I'm going to fry up vegetables in it. I am going to conserve some of my biscuits that I have over here. There's my butter that I made this morning out of a little pint jar because what I'm doing is, okay, so I'm having biscuits with bacon and the gravy I made from the bacon grease, some of the bacon grease. I do have sorghum in my uh, larder, so I think that's very important to have a lot of molasses and sorghum and all things, honey, things like that. Um, then I have my own homegrown green peppers, which I um, started frying up in the lard and then I obviously put in some silky eggs. We made some silky eggs. So this is what I'm having for breakfast, brunch, whatever. 
and uh, it's delicious and I'm drinking buttermilk. So when I made my butter, that's the butter, some of, I've already drank some of it, I'm hot. So uh, I'm having some of this and a, a glass of water. So this is what I'm having. In the meantime, I'm thinking up more things to, to fix up for later, guys. A lot of times they made stuff early and then guess what you were having again later. So that's what we're doing so far. <sighs> I'm hungry, let's eat. All right, guys, so I have breakfast brunch made. I have leftover bacon, leftover biscuits, butter, and I'm going to keep all that um, in case I need it. You've gotta have extra things to be able to eat on hand because standing next to the fire all day cooking three meals is very tedious. I'm telling you, mamaw, your great-great-granny, God love her heart. So now I'm going ahead and I'm cooking up some meat and uh, seeing how that rolls out. So again, this is a day-by-day -day thing for me. We're playing it, you know, I'm kind of playing it by ear according to what I have that's fresh, that I'm hungry for. You know, what do I have to drink? Do I have buttermilk? Do I not? Do I have butter? Do I not? It, it, it's a sort of a, you know, I'm trying to utilize as much of my fresh ingredients because why would you not? Why would you go bust out something you have in storage if you have fresh on hand right now? That doesn't make any sense unless it needs to be rotated out. So you hear that sizzling over there? It's not me. It's, it's that. Let's go. All right, guys. So while I'm at it, I'm frying up some ground beef. As you can clearly see, uh, we've moved everything else off and the fire is going really, really good. So what I'm doing here is ground beef getting it ready for later because while the fire is going, that's when I'm gonna cook. Oh my. Uh, as you can see, this pan right here is Upside Down Lodge. Thank you, Lodge. Thank you for all your great products. We appreciate them. And this is their carbon steel. This is not cast iron skillet. This is their carbon steel. It's much lighter. It is phenomenal. Must have, must have. I want them to make a smaller one uh, than this, and of course they've got a larger, larger like walk version. That's on my list. We're, we must have that. But here we go. All right, guys. What I have discovered on day one is this. It's a lot of prep. You need to make sure that you have your things lined up for sure the night before and ready to go. That includes your, everything you use for milking, which I pretty much already do. And all of your cast iron needs to be cleaned. And you need to have kind of an idea of what you're going to be doing the next day, obviously. So there's, there's the learning curve there for number one. Number two, cooking like this three times a day outside in 90 degree heat is extremely grueling. Not you can't do it, and we're doing it, but it is difficult. So what I am learning slowly but surely, which is what, you know, what my grandmothers did, uh, your grandmothers did, your great-great-grandmothers did, is a lot of times they only cooked twice a day. They'd have a big breakfast, and the thing about breakfast is those items typically fry up pretty quick. I mean, let's be honest, biscuits aren't, biscuits are easy for me. Um, fry up a quick little bit of bacon and make some gravy and eggs while you have to learn how to finesse the fire and the stove Which is what I'm learning. See I'm learning to work with this little stove I know how to work my big stove, but I'm, I'm figuring this uh, miss Pearl here. We named her Pearl um, We're working with her so I'm figuring her out real quick. Okay, so today's a learning curve on that also um, But also I'm finding out that I am cooking as much as I can that I can have for the rest of the day uh, and if I can even have it hold over till tomorrow, breads and whatnot, I'm going to do so because I may not be able to spend the time tonight or tomorrow like I just did today on this. So you have to constantly be planning ahead and thinking ahead. So when I get hungry this afternoon for a late little lunchy deal, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Those biscuits that you saw, I had two left over because I told you my gremlins would come around. And I put some, that aside with some bacon. I'm going to have that. I'm going to have some watermelon. I've got a watermelon over here that Fred gave to me the other day. We're not letting that go to waste. I'm going to have some fresh watermelon. I've made some custard over here as to, to satisfy my sweet tooth. I've got ground beef fried up. So I'm probably going to be having some fried, uh, you know, 
fry up and cook up some vegetables tonight with the ground beef. Real simple, guys. That's why the things were much simpler. They had to be. There is too much other stuff that's got to be done. You can't just stand around and cook all day. You might make your bread once or twice a week, and you can whip up some biscuits, but you got to move on. So I'm sitting here next to this. It's time to stir the custard again. We'll see how the rest of the day fares and see what updates I have left. But I'm telling you, uh, we've got to mow and I've got to pick corn and all of these things. So we're just going to continue to move forth. I'm going to be logging all of the things that I'm eating and how much. I'm not the only one eating some of this stuff now. I knew that wouldn't be the case. But I am going to monitor how much I'm using and for what. I think that's going to give me a better indication uh, for what I'm looking for. So we'll just move forth and see how the rest of the day goes. All right, guys, just a quick film here. We've already got the um, beginning of dinner going. So remember that meat that I had going earlier? Well, we have boiled our macaroni, as you saw in a quick little snap. What I've done is put drain the macaroni. And this is probably, I know I should be measuring this exactly, but it was like um, probably two to three cups because I'm not feeding myself now, I'm feeding the whole family. So you can see this is getting hot. This, is, this skillet is hot, so that's on there. We're cooking the meat, we're cooking the, that with it, and I'm gonna throw in my own homemade canned salsa because I need to process through my food storage. So things that I canned, say two years ago, I'm trying to use that up first, okay? So I'm gonna be putting that in there. This stove is so hot. Um, and then I have down here in the lower end more squash cooking. This is straight from the garden. And I just put in some oil and I have a little bit of flour and not much. Frying these foods like this is really great because you don't use a lot of flour or cornmeal. Just a little mixture of that, a splash of salt, a seasoning if you want it, and you fry it up, baby. All right, we're going to put the salsa in here. I'm not going to use my stewed tomatoes. I'm using my salsa. That's why I don't put a lot of spices and heat in my salsa. I keep it generic so that I can transform other recipes if and when and how I want to. Okay? So that's what we're doing right now. And whoo, I'm getting a suntan. Let's keep moving. Okay, guys, let me just have a brief rundown of what I've done for evening time, okay? I already pre-cooked my meat. Now, this is our own steer. This is our own meat that we have on the farm. This is why I tell you, you need to can your ground beef and all your meat products as soon as you can. That's my big late summer, early fall push, okay? So, obviously having to ration and to think and to plan, it quickly makes you go into the mode of, what meats do I have and how would they be preserved? I'm telling you, canning is a really great option for you. We are looking into building a smokehouse. We've been talking about that. Gosh, I've been talking about that with Miss Homestead Lady for about two years. So you guys out there and some of you girls that are really good with that, let me know. It's, a, it's on the list. It's just something we haven't done yet. You know, that's an ongoing deal on a true homestead. You can't get everything done at once, okay? So on the, the true list here, because we have a lot of meats coming in, pork and beef. So we have to have as much food preservation options as possible. So nonetheless, all you have here is ground beef. I cooked it with one of my peppers this morning that you saw and let it cook. And then I boiled water on the wood stove this afternoon. I have macaroni in there that I have in food storage. You can get that on your own. We've talked about some of that. You can also get it from other places that have it canned for you, like in number 10 cans or whatever. Really easy to store pasta. So that's what we've done. And then I added my own canned salsa in there that I had that already has a lot of my homegrown vegetables. Add just a hair of seasoning. I did not put any cheese. So there normally with my goulash I have cheese in it I love cheddar cheese and parmesan cheese but for for this I'm trying to be conservative because I'm trying to stay true to the cause here then we have squash 
straight out of the garden. A little bit of uh, cornmeal, non-GMO cornmeal, uh, and then you have flour mixed with it, a little bit of salt and pepper and seasoning, just a hair. Again, you want to you want to pull back your taste buds because you're going to be conserving as much of these things as possible. So, you know, I love deep fried yumminess, but even if you deep fry it, like you saw us do here, try to get away with the least amount of product. That's really something that you need to try to think about and train yourself with. Then you have homegrown tomato. I'll have a fly trying to jump in on here. Um, today, cut the watermelon by old Fred. He came up here, had watermelons. I give him eggs. He calls it hen fruit. He gives me watermelon. True bartering going on here. Taking care of neighbors and then my own homegrown tomato. So the next thing that I'm going to do, I don't know if it's going to work. This could be my fail today. Could be next, which is making a custard pie. Remember that custard we made earlier? Had a little snack with it. Now I've made a pie crust with lard. We're going to see if we can bake it on top of this little stove over here. So let's get moving. I'm hungry. Okay guys, I made a standard pie crust with lard, flour, and water, period. And I just hand, hand kneaded it and put it into my stainless steel pie pan. And what I'm going to do is I've got it on a trivet. And I've got this, man, this stove is hot. And I'm going to put a Dutch oven upside down on top of it. I'm going to see if this works. I've never made a pie crust like this. I know if the stove cooled really far down, I could bake it in there later. But I don't have time for that. So, <laughs> and neither will you. So, this is why a wood cook stove is a great option for you. But nonetheless, you got to work with what you've got, people. you got to use the brain, you know, that God gave you. So, I'm going to flip the Dutch oven upside down. I did take just a, because I've made butter today and I don't want to use a lot of it. I just patted a little bit of butter on there, just a little bit, just a little. So we're going to try it. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys, I just took the Dutch oven off. Had to use both hands. I don't want to get burned. And the pie crust is definitely poofing and puffing and baking. So I'm going to go ahead and take it off the heat, get the custard in, and we'll see how this turns out. Hey, we'll eat it regardless, right? I mean, let's not be too picky these days. All right, guys. Remember that custard I made earlier today? Had a little dessert earlier today, sweet tooth situation there. Now we've made a custard pie. Now I'm going to put the Dutch oven back on top of it upside down. And pray that this works. Like I said, we're going to eat this regardless. It's that good. But I'm looking at uh, my temperature on top is going to be between 250 and 3. So it's probably going to be more of a slow bake. So we're probably going to be looking at an hour. I'm finding out that when you look at recipes or you do things inside on the stove in the oven, it takes longer. It, it can take super fast time depending on what's going on. Or it takes a slow cook. So we're going to put this Dutch oven right back on top. And we'll just see how it goes. Hey, I'm ready to dig in right now. We'll just see how it turns out. All right, guys, custard pie, ready to go. That was cinnamon that I had sprinkled on top, by the way, not nutmeg. So that was homemade crust. We let it bake in the Dutch oven contraption, if you will, on the wood stove. We got the wood stove up to over 325. We have a thermometer out here so we can gauge it and one on the uh, Dutch oven as well. So we got it up to 325 and we let it bake for about an hour and 10 minutes. And that's what you see here. So it's cooling, which it needs to, and we're going to enjoy it. So we hope you enjoyed our first day on our food challenge. Every day is going to be different. I can assure you some are going to be a little bit more extreme than this, but some are going to be a whole lot easier or simple. Um, simply because of, well, different reasons. Food storage, heat, uh, weather, obviously, uh, things we have going on with homeschooling. And we have a whole lot of canning going on. We have an entire crop of corn to get into the, get into the house. So just like the old timers, what's going on around you sometimes determines how simple your foods are. So nothing wrong with that. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you came along for the journey today. Be sure to like us on Facebook and join us on Instagram and Pinterest and all the cool places we are. We will talk to you soon. And I can guarantee you one thing. I'm going to sleep really good tonight. Y'all take care out there.